You may have heard of Alan Turing, the father of computer science and the mathematical genius who cracked the German Enigma code during World War II, a feat that Winston Churchill once remarked was the secret weapon that won the war. But what you probably didn't know was that during his short lifetime, Alan Turing also proposed a theory to help explain a series of patterns that recur over and over again throughout the natural world, like the spherical organization of cells in an embryo, the spiral arrangement of petals on a flower, the world's tentacle pattern of a hydra, the waves on a sand dune, the spots on a leopard, and even the stripes on a zebra. Turing's desire to understand nature's reoccurring patterns stemmed from his fascination with embryology. Turing wanted to know how the small uniform ball of cells in an embryo could differentiate and morph into a fully formed complex being. His hunch was that there had to be some mathematical principle underpinning the reoccurring patterns in an embryo's development. So in 1952, Turing published a paper called The Chemical Basis of Morphogenesis, Within it, he proposed that the diversity of patterns we see in nature can be explained by a mathematical model called the reaction diffusion system. While the entire model is too complex to explain here, essentially the system can be broken down like this. Let's say we have two identical cells within an embryo. In the mix are two chemicals that can either activate or inhibit a specific reaction within an embryo's cells. Turing called these morphogens. As these morphogens diffuse through the embryo, they cause the cells around them to transform, ultimately creating patterns like spots, stripes, spirals, hexagons, and whirls. But this is just one example of the reaction diffusion system at work. Morphogens can really be any two chemical substances that work together to stop and start a reaction, like hormones, proteins, or acids. And changing the rate at which these components interact, diffuse, and decay determines the way those elemental patterns like waves, spots, and stripes appear. Today, many theoretical biologists and mathematicians believe that Turing's system could also be applied to the patterns found in vegetation on a landscape, weather systems, and even to the formation of galaxies. Sadly, Turing never found out whether his theory was right. In an age of intolerance, he took his own life in 1954 following a conviction for gross indecency, the charge for being openly gay. And for a long time afterward, his ambitious model was forgotten. But in the 60 years that have passed, some experimental data has started to emerge to prove that Turing really was onto something. Perhaps the biggest breakthrough to date is a 2012 study that applied Turing's model to the formation of digits on the pores of mouse embryos. It turns out that digits are, on a fundamental level, a series of stripes. During the early stages of development within an embryo, the pore or hand is a continuous plate of tissue. But over time, the cells change to either form digits or die and create the spaces between them. What researchers found was that the entire process fit the reaction diffusion system proposed by Turing. In this case, two genes controlled the production of morphogens that formed digits, while a third gene controlled the production of morphogens that caused cell death, forming the gaps between digits. In other words, those three genetic pathways working in opposition to each other create the stripes that are digits and gaps. What researchers called the perfect example of Turing's reaction diffusion system. Of course, more research is needed to determine whether Turing's model could really be applied to all the patterns that we see in the natural world. But at the very least, Alan Turing should be remembered as a mathematical visionary who changed the way we see our world. Another trailblazing mathematician called Ada Lovelace became the world's first computer programmer. Watch this episode to learn more about how Ada is partly responsible for all the amazing computer tech we rely on today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.